Hello. Yes, Pat. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we hear for you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for having me today. I believe in Seoul. It's a it's a good weather today uh, because it's uh, maybe early early fall, right, Miss Santi? Yes, correct, Pat. Okay, so unfortunately, I couldn't be uh, joining you today uh, there in Seoul, but uh, that's fine. Um, today, I would like to deliver about the opportunities and challenges of AI, artificial intelligence in dental healthcare. There are three agendas. First, I will briefly introduce you, the current state of AI, and then second, I will follow with the AI in dental healthcare, the opportunities and challenges, and then we, I will conclude the talk today. So, okay, this is from uh, one of the professors from Stanford University, Andrew Ng. Uh, if you are working on the AI field, I believe that you know him uh, very well. So in 2016, he said that uh, on the Twitter, AI is the new electricity, and then electricity transform countless industries. AI will now do the same. So this is very intriguing uh, to me, uh, and we can see that uh, today there are a lot of uh, kind of um, applications and then industries already embrace AI and then implement AI in uh, their field. And if you look at the last decade of AI, uh, it was started in the 2012 with the AlexNet. Uh, this is the, the winner of the Image, uh, ImageNet competition back then 2012. So the progress, the hype of the AI is very high within the last decade, uh, like the last, uh, 10 years or 11 years. So it was started with AlexNet and then computer vision switched to neural networks. So most of the computer vision um, networks use, it, use the neural, neural networks. And then there is a 2014 with GANs, generative adversarial networks. And then 2015 with residual networks, RNLSTM. And then there, is, there was an AlphaGo. And then transformer architecture. So this architecture, the transformer is the base kind of base network for what we know, maybe everyone knows in this forum about the chat GPT. So the chat GPT is based on the, based on the transformer. So it was kind of six years ago. It was started in uh, six years ago. And then there is a GPT bird and then graph neural networks and then GPT-2, GPT-3. And then now there is a, uh, there are chat GPT and then stable diffusion to generate kind of new images. And then now in 2023, it was the era of, it, it is the era of generative AI. So this is kind of the uh, last, last decade of uh, AI progress. Okay. And then if we talk about the landscape, AI landscape today, uh, mainly uh, what we are talking about, if we are talking about the AI, then it, it is mainly usually about the supervised learning. So there are many applications in supervised learning. And then if you are working on the AI, maybe you know about the generative model, the generative model, and then there is a small circle of the AI, it's unsupervised learning and then reinforcement learning. So I will talk mainly about two, two subjects uh, today. And then also in the applications of uh, AI in dental, dental healthcare also, it's about the supervised learning. Okay, what is the uh, the? Uh, excuse me, Pat Tom. Yes. So, do you mind to kindly use a, a slideshow, please? So. Oh, this is slideshow. Uh, you can use use slideshow at okay. the top. Oh, you couldn't see my slideshow over over there. Okay, wait. Please wait. Yep, at the top there is a menu for use slideshow. Yes, yes, on the right, right, on the yeah. right. Okay. Okay, I did already. So how about that? Yes, perfect. Thank you so much for thank you oh. so much, Pat. Sorry for interrupting okay. again. No, no, thank you. It's okay. It it was uh, because of the uh, dual monitor. So on another monitor, it shows the the slideshow. Okay. Uh, so now uh, let's talk about the AI models that we are now uh, that that I have explained before. So first is discriminative and then uh, generative. 
what is discriminative AI model? So discriminative AI model focus on classification and predictions and usually train using label data or supervised learning. And then learns, the goal is learns the, the representation of features from the data based on the label. And then for the generative model, usually uh, we use the generative model to generate new data because you know acquiring or collecting new data it's expensive and then we want to learn the distribution of the data and likelihood of the given sample and then learns to predict next token in a sequence so this is the learning paradigm of the supervised and unsupervised learning first the supervised learnings mainly that's the data has the label data. So for example, over here, if we have this uh, collections of the images, for example, dark and then not dark, then we know that exactly that, okay, this image is dark and then this image is dark and then this image is not dark and this image is not dark. So every image has its own label. And then in the supervised learning, we don't have any label data. So this is the different uh, kind of main difference between the supervised learning and unsupervised learning. In terms of the, let's say, for example, this is the classification. So in the classification, our target is to classify the input data, for example, given the input data, uh, like this two, and then we will classify that, okay, this image is, uh, this input is normal, and then this input is the disease. Maybe it has a disease, for example, pneumonia or any other type of uh, diseases. And then for the object detection, for example, supervised learning in the object detections, given the input data like this, and then we will, uh, classify and then also we find the location, the localizations of the, the object. For example, over here, this is tooth number 18, tooth number 16, and then tooth number 15. So this is the, the goal of the object detections. Instead of only classifying the object, but we also find the locations using the rectangular. And then in terms of the supervised learning in segmentation kind of uh, task, what you want to know that, for example, in the A, A is the input data, and then B is classification, uh, the segmentation results. So every pixel on the image, we get the value. For example, here is the, 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 the segmentation task is for the kind of carriers segmentation. So this is carriers one, carriers two, carriers three, and then carriers four. And every pixel has its own kind of uh, label. And then the C, C is the, B is the ground truth. And then C is the, 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 the generated kind of area. So this is segmentations. And then for the generative model, there are two, let's say, for example, if the inputs is the image, then it learns to produce new images using technique like diffusion models. And if the, the input is language model, then it learns the representation of language best patterns in the training data. And then for example, then given a prompt, they can predict what comes kind of in the next. For example, if we want to know, let's say if we type in the prompt, I want to go, and then there will be continuing, let's say go to the market, go to the school, in, but it depends on the context. So we call it a kind of prompt engineering. And then this is one of the example of the generative model for the images. For We, we want to generate kind of the, same or synthetic data, for example, this is for the synthetic data for the kind of uh, cells and the real and then real and synthetic, if we use both, because you know, in the medical AI, it's hard to, to collect new data. So we combine the real data and then synthetic data and the accuracy of the classification will be increased. This is the, one of the goal. And then this is another kind of example of the generative model. Skin lesion, for example, this is skin lesion, the, 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 uh, the real, real on the left and then synthetics on the right. And then this is just X-ray, this is real and then this is synthetic data. So this is kind of one of the a very interesting uh, field where we can generate a new synthetic data without collecting new data. Okay, and then in terms of language model, for example, large language model, maybe you have heard about the, let's say, chat GPT. This is recent advance in deep learning models. Some great use of uh, use case of LLM has been demonstrated, for example, like this. This is the, the okay, this is the kind of news on uh, four medical exams that chat GPT has passed so far. This is very kind of, uh, maybe, Five years ago, nobody can think of this, but now we can see that four medical exams that ChatGPT has passed so far, they've 
let's say 58% of common study exam used by physicians preparing for a board certificate in ophthalmology, for example. So this is kind of uh, in the news. And then also from the Google, Google unveil, uh, and unveil the Med Palm 2, a medical AI model to rival your general practitioners. For example, here, if we take a look at the result, this is very kind of interesting. Uh, medical Palm surpassed the results from the other kind of um, um, AI model. And then if we see here, this is approximate medical pass mark. It's only 60%, but using the med palm, it passed over 86.5%. This is amazing. Okay, and then this is one, one of the other kind of solutions or another opportunities for us. For example, can you write me a report analyzing this chest x-rays and then just giving this chest x-rays and then the AI model will give kind of a medical report. And then this is also one of the med palm to kind of applications can incontinence, incontinence be cured. And then clinician answer is like this. For example, urinary incontinence can be cured in some cases, but this depends on its cause. And then med palm answer is like this. Inconsist means as accidental loss of urine uh, or stool. And then uh, uh, you can read uh, the rest, but here is the clinician review of med palm answer. The answer from the AI model are complete answers. So there is no incomplete answer. So this is kind of well aligned with the, uh, the knowledge of the general practitioner. And then for example, the second one, here there is a one missing some important information. So this is a kind of very good progress on uh, current AI today. Okay, now let's talk about the part two, the AI in dental healthcare, the opportunities and challenges. Uh, it was started with digital transformations of the data taking method of the, of the dentitians. So for example, from analog impression taking to digital impression. First is this is traditional impression. This is traditional impression and then 3D intraoral scanner. And then the change of data format of the dentition. First on the left is stone model. And then the last and the right one is 3D virtual uh, model. So it happens or it's possible because of digital transformation. So this is kind of what's important. So if you want to apply AI to your field, then first you need to adapt the digital transformations about the data, how you gather the data into the kind of, kind of digital data. Okay, so uh, talk, talking about the AI in dental healthcare, we can have, let's say, this is two examples in the DDH use case. Uh, for example, this is X-ray equipment, and then this is IOS intraoral scanner. And then from the X-ray, there are three data. For example, panorama in DICOM format, and then cephalogram in DICOM format, and then CBCT in DICOM format. And then uh, for the IOS intraoral scanner, you can get the scan data in STL, for example. And then based on this data, input data, we can find we can develop kind of three, four, uh, three or four or much or or many more kind of applications. First, from the let's say this is pano, we call it pano for the panoramic, let's say, disease uh, segmentation, and then SEPRO for the cephalometric image analysis, and then SURGIPRO for the kind of uh, surgery uh, on the dental health uh, field. And then Ashley, this is for the 3D. Uh, maybe if somebody has ever uh, kind of experienced the you know implant treatment, orthodontic treatment, then maybe you have experience, let's say, using the CAS or using the intraoral scanner. So this is, can help the, doc, the dentist to make a treatment, kind of treatment plan for the patient. Okay, but the interesting thing here is that there is a, I will talk later on the challenge, but here in DDH, uh, in the D Digital Dental Hub, uh, we started firstly with research. So we publish our uh, kind of papers here, Automatic Identification Cephalometric Landmarks, part one, comparisons between the latest deep learning method, YOLO version three and then SSD. So in this case, we gather kind of new data, 1000 cephalometric radiographic images, and then use or apply the two kind of uh, AI model, first YOLO version three and then SSD. So this is kind of the samples what is the cephalometric? So this is cephalometric uh, data. And then there are some kind of, you know, landmarks. There are 80 landmarks over here. So for example, Sela, Nation, and many others. Okay, this is the list uh, of the anatomical landmarks uh, shown in figure one here. The, from one vertical reference point one, and then number three is Sela, four is Nation, and 
uh, at is terminal point. So this is the data that we gather. And interestingly, this data is acquired or collected by the uh, dentist uh, themselves. So we collaborate with a uh, hospital and then we collect the new data. Okay. And then the result is interesting like this. Uh, this is the single shot detector. Uh, you know, in the in the kind of uh, healthcare field, there is a standard minimum, let's say minimum mean errors in pixel unit. So we can measure, for example, uh, if the gap between the ground truth and then the AI result, it should be within, let's say, 2.5 millimeter, 3 millimeter, 3.5 millimeter, and then 4 millimeter. So there is a, a specific standard in the dental uh, field. Okay, and then we continue our research with the automated identification of set telemetric landmarks part two. Might it, be, might, might it be better than human? So this is very intriguing question. So we compare our results between the AI model and then the human examin examiners. So examiners here. So the difference between human examiners first trial and then second trial and then detections error from the AI. So we compare the results. So here, for example, here, the AI, the, the, the AI model has a better result, better performance compared to the second uh, human examiners, see. But in details, in details uh, here, for example, I wanna, know, I wanna uh, kind of give you some kind of insights here, for example, let's sell a landmark here. The AI has more accurate result compared to the human examiner. But this is the human examiner result. And then and some points over here, landmarks, AI gives kind of gives kind of better results. So this is very kind of promising, uh, promising uh, uh, progress, what we did. So uh, compare here, and then we can, we keep going, uh, we keep going, we keep, uh, what is it, conducting research on this field. And then finally, we kind of uh, develop our own software here, DDH uh, software. We call it Sepro. So this is DDHM Sepro. Uh, so we put, let's say, uh, input cephalometric images over here, and then automatically it will analyze the 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 the, the input data. So this is AI-based landmark detection analysis, growth and treatment predictions already kind of certified in the Korea KFDA and then Europe. Uh, license. So you can uh, register also if you are a dentist and you're interested to test it, you can visit our kind of website. And then second, this is deep learning based apical lesion segmentation from panoramic radiographs. So this is for the, like this. Uh, what is that? Maybe, uh, you know, cavities? I, I believe that some of you know cavities. That's a kind of dental diseases. So for example, if we give uh, the AI model the input like this, and it will automatically uh, generate segments automatically the diseases. So this is very useful uh, for the AI can orthodontics or, 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 or treatments in the dentist. And this is our software. You know, this is the, the, the pattern. So we wanna close the gap. We wanna uh, kind of closer the gap, uh, clo make, the gap closer between the research and production. So first we conducted the research and then second, we, we support our kind of software development based on the research. So this is the Pano, uh, Pano uh, software platform. So there are carriers, apical periodontitis and then a focular bone here. So we kind of um, combine several kind of uh, several AI model over here. So for example, this is the, uh, the upper, up, Apical periodontitis, for example, carriers. Here is carriers, the green one. So this is the development process of the, the development kind of results for our research. And then the last part is the automatic detections of teeth and dental treatment patterns on dental panoramic radiographs using deep neural networks. So we collected over 2000 data uh, and then using three or four AI models here for the natural teeth detection, prosthesis, and then treatment, treated root canals, and then implants. So this is the result. For example, we can automatically uh, um, label or we can find or, or detect, okay, this is tooth number 18. Maybe some of you just know about this information because our teeth actually has a, they, they have numbers. So 18, 16, 14. So this is automatic uh, kind of teeth detections. And then this is prosthesis uh, detections. And then this is root canal. 
since so have you if you ever uh, kind of experience the root canal treatment then it will be automatically uh, detected like this so this is surely will will help the kind of uh, dentist and then uh, looking at there are several i have talked about the you know the opportunities or what 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 we have done so far but you can also, there are many more kind of uh, fields or applications that you can develop, but there are several cha challenges during our kind of experience. First, what I wanna say is that small data set and then robustness, generalization, domain shift, and then change of management, regulation, ethics, and then different mindset, gap, mindset gaps between research publication and productions. So this is small data set. What is this small data set? Normally, it is very difficult, very hard, and it takes kind of, you know, a quite costly uh, collecting the new data set. So this is from the paper with, uh, with codes, for example, when I search dental, only four kind of, it, even this four, maybe for example, this is this 3 dds and then feed and lab. So it's not op publicly open, the data set. You need to collect your own kind of data. That's the first rule if you want to implement or uh, what is it? The implement the AI in your fields, especially in the dental healthcare. And then imbalanced data sets. For example, one class, one label here, CAT has, let's say, thousand, but real data, real data in the real experience, if you want to develop your own model or your AI model, usually the data is imbalanced. For example, class A, if Fusion has 10,000 data, but hernia has only, let's say, this is maybe 10 or 20 data. So this is the real problem in the real field. This is usually like this. You will see this on the research or public data set. You will find, let's say, a balanced data set, but on real production, it will be difficult to find the data like this. It's usually imbalanced data. What you possibly can do, maybe you may use the few shot learning and then use the data augmentation and then self-supervised learning and then or collecting new data if the data is easy to collect, for example. But on th in terms of the healthcare or medical healthcare or dental healthcare, it's not easy to collect new data. You need kind of uh, you need to apply for the ethical um, ethical what is it clearance, for example, on the hospital and many other things. And then robustness, generalization, and domain shift. So imagine like this. This is all these three are the panoramic X-ray, but they have visually different. See over here. So for example, this is a from the hospital A, from hospital B, and then from the hospital C. We need to tackle this kind of uh, kind of uh, uh, problems because it happens. You know. Uh, maybe we want to use our software and the hospital A, B, C, and D, but they have different type of the X-ray machines. They have maybe different of the processing type and different software and blah, blah, blah. So it generates different type of the data. So we have to tackle these challenges. For example, from the tech technical solution, usually in engineering or human in the loop. So we need to get feedback from the, from the dentist or from the, the human. And then the, 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 the next one is the mindset gap this is that i want to highlight so because i am now lecturer and but experience in the production in the research field usually you we use the public data set clean and balance but on the on the production in the company usually private data is an imbalance so it re, it requires more kind of pre-processing and then if it's focused on novelty so focus on novelty means that okay whatever you whatever you uh what, what is whatever you, you will do everything to, to get the maybe better results. And then novelty, novelty is the very important on the research, right? When you publish the paper, you need to have the novelty. But for the productions, usually focus on implementation. Maybe it's not that novel. You can use kind of existing model, but it goods on your case, for example. And then processing time sometimes is ignored in the, in the research. So you don't care about the, let's say, okay, it will take maybe, uh, two minutes, but on the research, on the production, sorry, in the productions, maybe you need the real time, maybe only 10 seconds, one second. So this is very important. And then try to get better, the best performance in the research. Usually you compare with, uh, we compare with other kind of other papers and then we compare, okay, our result is better, but on the productions, usually we don't, we don't really kind of pick the best performance model, but Maybe it's just so so performance model, but with the real time or less processing time. So this is the, the different kind of mindset from the research and production. So what we can do 
what we need to do is that intense discussion and then also collaborations. We need to sit together between the researcher and then also the engineer or software developer. So we can kind of uh, get kind of the, the, the best result for our case. So this is what we did. Usually we talk with professors from university and then also engineers. So what, uh, because our goals somehow are different. Okay, and then the last one is ethical AI. This is very important these days. Uh, we need to empowering humans and then human control and then privacy, security, and safety by design. The, and then accountability, fairness, minimization of bias, transparency, transparency, explainability, and ethical use. So when we gather data, we have to apply for the ethical clearance, for example, or IRB institutional review board. And then, or when we when we develop the model, we need to get feedback from the doctors. We need to we need to know kind of their feedbacks, what is their opinion. Maybe it's good results, but maybe it's not suitable for this case, for example. So we need to talk about this. And then everything should be done and should be done transparently transparently so the data should be transparent there is no bias so it can be used let's say in in this uh, about, well, let's say in this um uh let's say country and then it works also better also on other races for example so that's kind of ethical kind of uh, issue that we need to consider okay so i want to conclude what we have uh, discussed so far so artificial intelligence is already here and keeps progressing. So if you are working now, either in education, economic, business, healthcare, so you need to try to understand what is the, what the AI is and then try to embrace this technology. And then the AI technology revolutionized the healthcare by providing many benefits. As I mentioned before, in the healthcare and the dental healthcare, we have developed, let's say, several softwares that can benefit for the dentist. And then some initiatives and efforts have been have been done. So in the DH, we have developed several software, including the what is it based on the research, uh, a research-based kind of uh, platform we have called intense collaboration with the universities. And then uh, the last one is many challenges could be solved by technical solution and also more collaborations. There are many challenges on the implementations. So we need to sit, sit together and then have more collaborations between uh, stakeholders. I mean, for every stakeholders, for example, engineers, government, and then university, and then uh, doctors or ex uh, expertise uh, experts. So we need to, to do kind of more collaboration so we can um, we can adapt this AI technology ethically and then give more, more benefits to the uh, kind of uh, to the people. Okay, and then thank you. Terima kasih gamsa hamida everyone. Uh, so if you are interested uh, to to have to 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 conduct collaboration with me, you can uh, scan the QR code or send me the email to tomhart.ss at gmail.com. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, uh, listening, uh, my my talks. Thank you, Miss Santi. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Pak Tom. Thank you so much for sharing with us in this IC Base uh, 2023. Okay. Hold on. Let me check. So I think um, we have one we have one questions in the zoom chat box and also uh, from the audience uh, we have uh, participants one participants raise the hands so which one do you want to go first pat tom the one that raising the hands or already sent the chat box <laughs> maybe a raising hand first okay uh -huh. okay so the committee can give the access uh, for a while to miss sabrina okay yeah, Ms. Rabrina, do you want to ask the questions to Dr. Tom Hart? Yeah. Thank you, Miss. Okay. Hello, Dr. Thomas. Mr. Thomas, um, I want to ask you about uh, the artificial intelligence, right? Uh, how do you think uh, if the AI in the future to replace uh, our work, uh, like a human work, uh, what is the solution of it and to uh, solu solution of the in high unemployment in the future? Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Very interesting question. It's a green cash question. So I, I can answer right away. Can I answer right away? Miss Santi? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, doctor. Okay. So, okay. This is one of the concern. I believe so even as, a, as an educator. 
is also our concern how we can kind of uh, uh, manage or uh, it's um, maybe manage maybe that's the right words for this so first thing I believe that we need to do is that we need to embrace uh, this technology because we couldn't stop this technology they make a so kind of fast quick progress rapid progress so there is no way for us to stop this technology what we can do is that we need to embrace learn this technology and implement it or if you couldn't implement it then you need to know kind of understand learn about the ai for example and then how this ai can benefit can can be beneficial for your case let's say for your work that's that's the thing that you need to do i think everyone must to do because uh, learning from the progress and then what I, I can do right now, I don't think that some parts of our works will be replaced. Yes, for example, kind of uh, labor, maybe labor intensive work that should be, it could be replaced. It might be replaced by the AI, but the positive thing is that we can do more productive things. We can do more product. We can be more productive in our works, for example. So that's kind of the 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 things that we need to kind of to do, learning, embracing, and we need to keep up with this technology. I know it's hard, but that's our our kind of um, our our works. I don't think it's it's not, but it's kind of our job to understand or to to keep up the the technology here maybe slowly but sure you need to we need everyone here we need to know uh, understand the progress of ai and how this ai technology will be beneficial for us i think that's the the first thing that we need to do and then don't worry uh because the one that uh, i forget from whom but the one who will be replaced is people who don't use ai so this is very interesting. Uh, if you surely, if you use AI uh, in the ethically ethical manners, of course, ethical. So that's the highlighted over here. Ethically use AI, then it will be beneficial, and um, maybe there are more opportunities in AI that we can kind of utilize. Hopefully, it answers the questions. It's a difficult questions. <laughs> Thank you, doctor. I got okay. it. All right. Okay. So um okay. So from the uh perhaps actually we have also a question from the on-site participants, Pat Tom. But before that, uh, allow me to read the questions in the Zoom chat box. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this is coming from our colleague from Universitas Muhammadiyah Karanganyar Solo. So from Bapak Yusuf. So the question is actually regarding the development of the art. Uh, of the AI nowadays is very massive in every context. Yeah, in your case, is in the healthcare, yeah, but, um, yeah, particularly for the uh, dental care. So the question is, um, th 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 this is uh, perhaps you can also correct, yeah, if uh, there is something uh, misperception or something like that, you 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 can clarify also. So actually, um, he asked about. And he said about that he get information that some AI could correct to each other, yeah, and is yeah, to to correct each other mistake even without having approval from us. So uh, I mean, like from us as a humans, yeah, as as their masters. But how do you think about the development of the AI massively nowadays? In one side of coin, yes, of course, it's very useful, and at the other side, it could cut also many costs many costs of workforces mm -hmm. but on another hand <laughs> the imaginations like the i robot you know the e robot mm -hmm. film becoming true so soon so perhaps your um uh answer uh dr tom okay that's a uh, good very good question uh from pa yusuf yeah pa yusuf so well, what I can say about this uh, massive uh, progress, rapid progress on the AI, I even for me, uh, because I work on the computer visions and AI since 2015, even I didn't expect that the AI could be kind of massively rapidly progress like this. So 
um, the thing that we can kind of uh, do uh, first is the, the there are more benefits or opportunities that we can do. But uh, that's why these days maybe people are more int uh, very interested in the ethical AI, uh, Misanti. So the ethical AI, why? Because the one who develop AI is us, human. So we need to conduct it ethically. Let's say collecting the data, developing the model, and then testing, evaluating, monitoring, everything. Everything should be done ethically. Maybe, you know, maybe from uh, somebody from the law can, uh, may understand this better because regulations comes after. So what we can do, because regulation is controlled by maybe let's say the government, but the ethical is by the society. So this is, that's why we need to teach. We need to kind of uh, spread this AI information ethically that, okay, you should develop this model by using the, let's say, uh, um, public data set, or maybe when you gather the data, if it's regarding the patients, for example, they should be done um, according to the, let's say, ethical clearance from the hospital or from the university, for example. So I think one of the key here is the uh, ethical issues. That's we need to kind of, you know, in the front, in the front uh, kind of frontier, front part of the development. Maybe some people, that's why kind of uh, there are several issues, even from, let's say from the chat GPT, for example, we can correct the chat GPT by using the prompt and then, but uh, previously there are many kind of uh, ethical issues, bias to the gender, for example, to the specific ethnics, for example. So this is the, the I mean, the progress that we need to um, maybe, maybe join hands together. That's, I mean, maybe that's what I can say right, right now. Okay, thank you so much, Pak Tom. And here we have the on-site participants that wants to ask live questions also, Pak Tom. So allow me uh, to move a while, yeah? Okay. Sure, sure, Miss Santi. All right, so Pak Tom, I hope that you still hear my voice clearly, right? Yeah. Okay, great. Fine. So, okay. So we have Ibu Dr. Peggy that want to ask the questions to you. So um, please welcome Ibu Peggy. Okay, thank you. Hello to Mr. Tom Hartsia Dari. I'm Peggy. I want to ask uh, some questions. Uh, I like your, this is your listening? Yes. Okay. okay. The research is very interesting. So I want to ask you how much artificial intelligence influences the life, and uh, there is possibility that human takes your sphere. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh, Miss Santi, can you please? Uh, because it's not that clear. The sound. Oh, the sound is not clear. Yeah, it's not that clear to me. So, oh, okay. can you please repeat the question again yeah. one more time? Okay. There are two questions. Okay. Repeat Hello, Doctor Piggy. <laughs> is it clear? Yeah. No, it's okay. kind of better. Thank you. Yours is very interesting. So uh, I want to ask how much artificial intelligence influences the life. Okay. And uh, one question again. Is there a possibility that human tasks will disappear? Okay. Okay, <laughs> okay. that's very... Uh, intriguing questions from Dr. Peggy. Okay, so first, how much they are influence our life? I believe if we are, maybe sometimes you are not aware, but AI is actually influence us in every single life, every single kind of aspect of our life. Even let's say your phone, our phones. Now, uh, let's say we are using Facebook, Instagram. 
and then that's social media and then from the banking for example banking using face recognition and then from the texting automatically let's say uh, adjusting blah 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 so i think ai influences us in our every single life even without our kind of awareness that's kind of the answer for us uh for for the the, the answer for the first question and then the second human tasks will be disappeared um maybe some i believe some 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 tasks uh doc, uh, good doctor good doctor so for example uh previously when i was young this is kind of real example that i, I have experienced maybe uh let's say uh, human tasks like cleaning for example cleaning there is no robot cleaning you know robot vacuum cleaner maybe when i was young i i do the course manually the i do the kind of uh cleaning the floor manually but now just using the human robots uh i am sorry by using the cleaning uh, robot cleaning right for example vacuum cleaner so the benefit for me i got the benefit uh for example because let's say um, i believe so that uh, dr peggy also has many uh kind of uh, activities right doctor maybe in the morning we couldn't do that chores by ourselves so we can uh, kind of ask the robot to do that cleaning the the floor and then uh, or is it dishes uh and then also for example making our cup coffee but of course I believe that it could then be completely disappeared because there is a still, you know, we have kind of, we get a feeling, you know, by doing, let's say, <laughs> maybe it will release our stress, for example, by doing the cleaning. It could be or by doing the kind of, what is it, uh, this, uh, this cleaning, for example, by cooking, by make, let's say, making our own coffee, for example, it will release our stress. So I don't think that it will be completely disappeared, but in some way it will help us, especially let's say if you are very busy, for example, there is some uh, kind of AI can help us. That's kind of one of the, the kind of the, the benefits. And also, for example, now in Seoul, I don't, I don't know whether uh, Bu Doctor, can you speak Korean, but the Google Translate will be very helpful for us. Or maybe Papago. In in Korea, there is a software called Papago, instead of Google Translate, but we use kind of Papago from neighbor. So this Papago is kind of gives better translation from the Korean to English, for example. It's very useful, right? So that's kind of our how can okay, it affects us in our daily life uh, much. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, more or less. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Peggy. Hope to see you here in Seoul, in Indonesia later on. <laughs> yes, Miss Santi? It's been right? And in Seoul, with uh, Dr. Peggy. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes, please. Hello. Yes, Wu. Hi, I'm here. Ah, I am in show with Miss uh, Dr. Peggy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for yeah. your kind and willingness to be a keynote speaker. Uh, it's a uh, hot. Picks, yeah. Yes, right. prof. Yes, prof. Yes, prof. Ah, I, I cannot hear you. Oh, yes, prof. Okay, okay. 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 Ah, clearly, clearly. Thank you so much. Uh, from okay. Uh, okay, see you in Indonesia or Korea? <laughs> sure, sure. Hope to see you soon in, in Indonesia. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> thank you for inviting me. Yes, yeah. Okay, so uh, once again, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Tom Hartsia Dari, that already 
uh, delivering the keynote speech uh, about the artificial intelligence. So once again, thank you so much, Pak Tom. Thank you, Miss Anthony.